Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're looking here at the linear burn blend mode and the practical uses of it in five different ways that you can do that. So the first is simply to take the layer and hit Ctrl J to duplicate it. And then we'll go and look at the blend mode. So darken does nothing, multiply, dark. Color burn will intensify colors and darken shadows. Linear burn darken shadows even more, not quite so much color intensification. You can with this turn the opacity down. So if you put that around about 50%, and if you just look at the different, the, this area here to see the difference, when I go to linear burn and I go back to color burn, see the way that's lightened up, that shows kind of a mid-tone effect. So the color burn, linear burn, it's that lightness and, and the balance of it. Okay, let's turn that, take that off and try the next one, which is to put in a fill layer. And to do that, we go to layer, new fill layer, and we'll pick up whatever colors we got here. By the way, it's often better in this to use the color wheel. I go up to the hamburger up there and pick that at the top there rather than say the sliders. And if I put this into linear burn mode, we can see then that I can go from white to black. So in between there, you get the darkening effect. But if I go inland from here into color, I'm now starting to tint it. And particularly note with this, when I'm tinting this here with a color, and I can bring the opacity down to make that a little bit more, um, more normal, not too dark. What you're getting though, is you're getting color in the whites and in the shadows. So a fill layer, colour in the whites, colour in the shadows, with linear burn as opposed to the colour burn, which actually looks a bit odd there, because it's it's protecting the whites. In this case it makes more sense to do it with linear burn to get that even coloration. Another way of doing this is to use the recolor. So if I go here to recolor this uses an HSL model. However, recolor itself protects whites. So you're getting this white protection here. You're getting color in the shadows. So that when I go here to linear burn, I'm still getting the whites here being protected. So it can be a bit odd. Also if here, by the way, if I change this from linear burn to color burn, it goes completely nuts. So the color burn is useless effectively in this situation. So with linear burn, what else can we do? Well, if I turn down the saturation here, unsurprisingly, it puts less color into it. And so that you can get something more of a tint than a, a blast of color. And the lightness will be a bit like a volume control on this. So all the way up, you're getting no effect whatsoever and bring it down. You're adding in that saturation color. So you've got color in the shadows here, but the whites are protected. And notice the sky here is, is not changed that much either. And then you can change the hue to make it say to a more sepia effect and so on. So then let's go to another one and go to HSL. With HSL, we put that into linear burn. Color burn, by the way, Similarly, not much use. So with linear burn, you've got the darkening as you'd expect in linear burn. And again, you can play with the colors here. You can turn up and down the colors. So in a similar way to the recolor, but now just the coloring of all things with saturation and so on. And using the luminosity as a kind of volume control, turn it up, lightens it, but also reduces the effect. And you can then go up and down to the amount of saturation you like, even down at the bottom, you're still getting some color. So you're getting a very muted effect with, with saturation at zero. What you can do with this as well is check the HSV. And this changes what the luminosity does. So this now is, is making it more colorful. So I can turn this all the way up to get a lot more color in it. And the saturation here, I can play with this as well. So saturation down, with HSV up and luminosity up and give us a nice colored effect. Let's see a before and after that. So before and after it just intensifies the colors quite nicely. 
and remember color burn completely useless here okay one more thing which is we're going to put in a blur so i'm going to go to the gaussian blur and can turn up the radius to blur it you can see the bits around the edge preserve alpha takes that away and then i can blend it and again the color burn useless but linear burn we get this darkening effect and i can change the radius to how much blur there is but main control here is opacity can bring this down to something more sensible so what you're getting here is the details coming through but you get a kind of glow if you change the blend mode on this to darken you're getting a similar effect here but it looks more cartoony multiply is a little bit darker and linear burn darker and richer so if you want this effect that's often a good one to use okay that's i think that's five different ways of using the linear burn for different effects and where it particularly works as opposed to other blend modes like color burn so thank you very much for watching